All right, guys, we're back and we're talking about lighting in this episode of the level editor tutorial videos. Uh, this level is called Terminal. It was created for the live stream on the launch day. Um, I've done a little bit more since the live stream came out, but I want to show lighting for it. Uh, we don't have it in the game right now. We did make another version of the level. That is the challenge mode version. I added a little bit of an extra area here. And then there's a bunch of light objects, which I'll delete and we'll recreate, sort of show how to uh, generate the lighting. So we're gonna take this level, delete all the light entities. So we're gonna do that by going to, actually we'll just do the easiest way, which is we have one selected. We're gonna mark entities of type. We're gonna delete those guys. Uh, save the level, save it as a new name just in case I screw it up. And then I'm going to export it to the game and check out how the lighting looks right now. So the lighting is generated by decals automatically when you have lights in the decal. So let's take a look at the decals. Like this light decal right here has a light. You can see a little bit of a green arrow coming out. Ignore that. Um, pointing forward here, this is the properties of the light, the intensity, the range, angle. This stuff is all set for every decal individually. You can add up to four lights here. I think almost everything only has one or zero lights. Uh, you can change the type. It can be spotlight, point light, point no shadow, and spot no shadow. Almost everything uses spot because that creates shadows by default. And spotlights are way faster than point lights because it's actually a point light is actually six spotlights combined together in a smooth way. So no shadows also helps things move uh, run faster, but um, generally we use spotlights by default. But you can use what uh, you can edit these yourself. You can uh, create new ones, create copies of these, and edit the uh, <coughs> edit the light properties on your copies of them. Um, we'll show you how to do that in another video talking about more decal editing. Uh, we're also going to use entities a lot in this and we're going to do a little bit of entity editing. We'll cover more entity types in another video, but uh, we're mostly going to be using, so these lights, all these light decals here, they have their own little lights. Let's look at that one. I mean, most of these properties are pretty simple. It's just the intensity, the range, the angle, and then they point straight out by default. You can sort of visualize it in your brain if you think about it. Some more lights. These lights are a little bit brighter. Let's look at those. Not that one. L2. There we go. There's an intensity of 3, range of 12 instead of uh, 2 and whatever the other one was. 11 or 10 and a half. And then those have some emissive parts of them, but they don't actually have lights. Let's take a look. See from that angle. Not that one. There we go. Those have a little bit of emissive. That black part is actually purple in game. But these are lights. And then this texture is actually very bright in game, and that'll affect the reflection probes. So it's what we get generated here. And another important thing about reflection probes is they are generated for every chunk that we create. We need to show chunking. And this here are the split planes that I placed in this level. Here it's like push F5 to refresh, and then we want to be in chunk view mode. These are the different chunks that the game will use. Every one of these will get a re its own reflection probe. So wherever it'll place the reflection probe in the center of a segment that's closest to the center of the chunk. So for example, for this chunk, it'll probably be placed in this segments right in the middle. Uh, you can't do anything to override that right now. They're probably not going to add support for anything more than that. Uh, for our custom or for our levels in the game, we generally do a little bit of customization with that, but it's not usually necessary. Um, yeah, so there'll be a reflection probe here, there, there, and then reflection probes take a snapshot of the world around and then use that as sort of an additional rendering tool for doing reflections and things of that nature. But yeah, 
that's a quick aside on reflection probes. Let's go back into wire texture mode. We're going to turn off the split planes. Exported the level. Or we're going to export the level. Actually, we'll do, we'll just do challenge mode. Two. All right, this is going to take a little bit, and we're going to fast forward and jump into the game and play this level. All right, we're back. Uh, we had some weirdness with the export process, but we're just going to start the game up now. We will get into this level and see how it looks with no lighting adjustments. All right, here we go. We're in the game. Play Terminal 2. Put on trainee since the robots actually will be spawning now. All right, so see the really bright light? It's not actually casting any light. It just uh, is affecting the reflection probes, but nothing else. Let's see. I need to get those guys so they're not attacking me. We'll be astral, so they can't actually uh, run into me. All right, this area looks all right. Could use a little bit more brightening there. That looks a little oversaturated. This lava is generating some light, but it'd be really nice for it to cast more light up on the ceiling. And same goes for this area. Like everything just needs to be brightened up a bit. Um, I'm looking at this on a fairly bright monitor, but you guys have probably seen a bunch of blackness overall. Let's uh, turn on the headlights there. Yeah, if we need to use headlights to see everything better, that means that we need more light in general. So we're going to use our light entities and make this area look a lot nicer. And we'll make this overexposed brightness area look a little bit nicer as well. Um, we're probably going to expand that area taller. And the reflection probe maybe can be moved or just a little bit by moving how it's clipping this area. All right, so let's go ahead and do all this stuff. All right, let's start with that area first. We're going to that. We're going to scale it. Scale it this way. And a lot farther from the reflection probe, so look a little nicer. Let's look at split. And it's in this spot, I think it should be. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And that looks good. Okay, so that'll help. Let's actually put a light up here now. Let's kill these split planes. Now we're going to be placing entities. Let's go to lights. We're going to place one. Let's go to entity mode. To segment center. Now, by default, these automatically face the side you have selected and try to align with them as well. We've got our snap settings set to 0.5, which is pretty good for moving entities around. And I can use the mouse or keyboard. I prefer to use the keyboard most of the time for moving these around. Make that nice and high. Set this range really high, like 30, density, 4, and this angle is definitely not wide enough. Let's go like 70. All right, we're just going to leave everything white for now because we can go back and adjust color later. All right, so that's the bright light there. We're just going to do the simple uh, things for now. We'll come back and do more advanced stuff later. So let's say I want something to be on this side. Place it on the segment side. It's not facing the direction I want. If I pick, I want it to face that. A selected side. There we go. Now it's looking where I want it to go. Move it up this way a little bit. Change the range, angle. There's no visual feedback on these things, but you can sort of imagine 100 degrees is like that wide, that wide. Uh, 
I think we'll add <coughs> hopefully some visualization features for these lights because okay. we generally didn't have to use these lights in the full game because we would just place custom lights in Unity, but now that we're using them for custom levels, we'll probably want to improve their usability a little bit. That's pretty easy to do just by making it visually show you what you're actually editing here. We do that already for um, triggers, so we can probably do it for these things as well, even though you'll probably have to click off of them to get it to update. All right, and let's also add a light so on that side. When you place something on a segment side, it automatically faces away from that side. I'm going to place it there. We're going to have that light face up. It's going to be pretty wide as well. Let's do 100. Of five, two, and we're going to make this red. So hue of red is zero, but we're going to go a little orange. <clears throat> we're going to make it very saturated, 0.95, and that'll make it see the color here change to about orange. Up a little bit just to make sure it's in the world. So f so far, all these lights we've uh, put in here are point lights, but we've got to make sure they're spotlights because we actually don't want them to be point lights. All right, spotlights. Those are our three main lights we wanted to add. And I want to do one more. Just do a nice fill light right in the middle of this, and that's going to be center. Point, no shadow light. Shadow. Not a, this is a nice big thing, not very bright. And this is going to be a fill light. Now that these point and no shadow lights, the angle does not matter. I just want to show what that does in the game. We're going to end up using those a lot. We've got the main lights. These lights do cast, these three big lights do cast shadows, but most of the other ones will be like this fill light that we have, and they won't cast you. So we're going to do an export now and jump into game. But after we go into the game this time, we're just going to be in the editor for a while because each export takes a little bit. Um, one quick thing we can do is reduce our grid size down to six by six instead of eight by eight. Uh, we'll cut down these smoothing passes too, even though we'll want to increase those later. And just see if that helps speed up the export process a little bit. So I'm going to save this, export it, and we'll see you in game. All right, we're back. We're going to check out the level now and see if those uh, big new lights actually do anything. Play. Really need a mode to uh, disable the robots. Okay, so there's our fill light in this area. You can sort of see it's casting some extra light there. Stop bugging me. We're just going to kill some robots. Training's pretty easy. All right, so I probably want that light to be bigger and a little less bright. You definitely want some light to bounce up here. That's looking better. It's not perfect, but it's good enough, I think. And then it's casting some nice shadows down here through the grate. Yeah, slightly too bright for that reflection probe, but I don't really mind too much. We're not going to worry about it right now. You can sort of see how the reflection probe uh, brightens up this whole area. So maybe we will just kill that split plane and just let the reflection probe light this whole area. All right, here we go. This is a nice bright light from this down here. Again, it's probably a little too bright, I would say. Might not even need to cast shadows, to be honest. It makes it look like the lava is super bright. But you know what? Let's live with it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as I did before. I think we'll just live with it that. Here's the other shadow casting light. It's pretty nice. Super bright up there, but that's all right. 
We're just going to live with a little bit of super brightness. Yes, I know you want to kill me. All right, so we need some light coming off of these lights. So what we really want to simulate is what we call global illumination. We want the reflection of these lights to light up everything else a little bit more. We want it to just sort of spread out. And even though we have this nice shadow casting area, we want, um, we want everything else to light up more so it's not so dark in this area. It's, you guys probably can't see anything right now. All right, so we're gonna do that. What we're gonna do is just use these bright lights to basically fill in the light of everything else. And we want a little bit more light in this area as well. We're just gonna pretend that these lights actually generate more light than they do and just place a nice point light there that doesn't cast shadows. we sort of just brighten everything up. So we don't wanna use too many lights, but it's not a problem to have some big point lights as long as they don't cast shadows. And we can use some spotlights as well. Like for, we'll use an extra spotlight that doesn't cast shadows and it'll lighten everything up and not just this area right here. Let's go ahead and do that. It'll look real nice at the end. All right, so we're gonna go back to wire texture just to help me line things up a little better. All right, so let's start with this one here. Let's duplicate that down a little, widen it out. Range looks all right. Let's go with just an intensity of one. So that's our, we want this to be spot, no shadow. There we go. So that's going to brighten everything up in this area. Let's actually move it a little closer to the center. We can have this outside the world if we want. I want it to face a little bit more straight down. Yeah, I think that looks like a good spot. Let's have this. Lower the angle of this, and then we'll create a nice point light at the bottom area to just fill in everything. And then we'll get it casting some light out this way as well to draw you into the lava area. It's so we got a narrower. Let's duplicate that. Up some. This is going to be a point no shadow. This is going to be not very bright. 0.5. There stays the same. Oh, I'm. Made that mistake again. One, this one up, not this one. So you can tell I'm the marked one is the one I'm actually editing here. Or the selected one is the one I'm editing, not the marked one. So this is the one I want to be the point light with no shadows. Sort of fill in the area here. Then we're going to do one more. Oh, we got two lights because we had both of them marked. Okay, so we got a light here, and I wanted to sort of cast light out this way. So we're going to select this face there, face selected side, and use control and up and down. So this is already facing at a weird angle, so we're just going to have to experiment a little to get it to rotate the way we want. That's not quite what we want. That's not quite. There we go. I'm using a control alt plus and minus to do a little tuning of how it's facing. Looks like close, but not quite. No alt. No alt and four on the numpad. There we go. All right. I think that looks good. That's no shadow and subtle to 0.5. Right, we talked about removing that split plane. So here's where the split planes are generated. You can tell there's going to be one there. Let me do show. There's one right there. 
That's going to have an unintended side effect of putting it here. Hopefully it'll put the reflection probe here and then it won't be so bright everywhere. All right, and then we're going to generate a light. Keep looking. This is going to be our little light. It's actually seen a decent direction. Maybe we want it a little more straight down. That looks good. Now, I know that this area here was a little too dark, so we're going to create a point light about. We want this to be a nice, subtle point light right there. Shadow. Is fine. 0. 0.5. Let's look at this fill light again. So that was already 0. 0.5, so we're going to lower it down to 0. 0.25. Duplicate it down there. Now we got another extra one. What happens when you go fast and you're not paying attention. All right, so that's there. Fill light. We want another fill light here. It's duplicating in quickly. Five for this one. Exercise a little. All right, so we've got see all the lights that we have in here. Okay, so these are all the lights that we've placed so far. All right, so I think the area we're going to have problems with, I think there'll be enough light here, but I could see filling in more of this area. Not going to be enough light here or in this area here. So we're going to take Actually, I'll take, I'll take this one. It's our fill lava light. We're going to move it up. About there. Place it in that direction. Right, let's turn it a little bit more to the side. Not that much. There we go. It's pretty good. Okay, so that's going to generate a little bit more uh, orange light coming over here. And then we want to thin, just like thin that this generates more light than it actually does. It's going to bounce all the way around here. That's what this light is supposed to do, but I don't think it's going to be enough by itself. Duplicate it here. Down. So have a face straight down. It's control and eight on the notepad. It's going to be too much light, so we're going to do just a real subtle there. And that should light up the floor. This whole area this is pretty much what I want in a little bit. All right, so now when I save the level, it's going to give me an error. That's fine. That error is just saying that this is outside the level, but it doesn't really matter. It'll figure out where to put it. All right, let's see. Got fill light there. Probably going to get a little bit of a dark area in this part. Well, let's just export it and see. All right, we're back in the level. Ooh, that's looking okay. Maybe a little bright there. Same with up here. We might just want to... Yeah, it looks all right. This area might be a little too bright. Correct. Ooh, this looks nice down here.
That looks better in here. This area is still a little dark. I could use some directional light from probably in there. I do a little uh, spotlight facing out this way with no shadows. All right, this is looking better over here. Maybe a little dark in this area, but not too bad. That reflection probe is looking a little funky there. This is nice. Yeah, that orange sort of spills out from the lava area over there. It's nice. And it spills out over here as well. All right. Something else real fast. All right. Our, uh, Probe's looking all right. Like it doesn't. Still using the same one. We want to darken this a little bit or make it directional, probably. It's generating a little too much light. Like it's coming from anywhere. This area looks fine. It's good. Maybe use a little bit of the spill this area. This looks good. Collection probes are picking up stuff nicely here. Bit of an eyesore, but tweaking the reflection probes is kind of hard. I guess we could uh, separate that into another chunk up there. Try that and see how it works. Let's do a little bit more polish on this and see how it turns out, and we will be all done. Let's go back. So first, we're going to split. We're still going to try. Like to turn that off. It didn't work. All right, so let's create another here. We'll this one duplicated. Pretend it's coming for a little bit. That way. Subtle. More subtle on this one. And this thing is too much spot. Oh, you set the reflection. Select like that. I must have accidentally moved something, but I don't know what it was. And a lot of areas good. Stop. Once we do this, 
Let's make it look like it's coming more from this side. There you go. That'll look more natural. Spotlights generally look more natural than point lights. Um, you only really, really want to use point lights uh, in situations like this where the light's coming from a larger area. Spotlights are better at uh, conveying directionality, of course. And like this light is a wrong type. We want point vision. Okay, I see what we did. That's correct. Yeah, it's done. All right, there we go. I think that's all the lighting that we need for this. Our splitter there. We can probably try to kill. One. Just isolate the really super bright area to up here. Chunk down here will be more normalized. Let's see how that turns out. So like I said, tweaking the reflection probes is kind of difficult. Again, we're using minimal uh, values on the grid and the smoothing values to help our export process go faster. But once we're done with the level, we'll want to increase those values back up. All right, now we're seeing a difference. It looks a lot nicer now. It doesn't it does hurt up there a little bit, so maybe we would want to split that up there. See how it looks over here. Yeah, that looks nice too. Yeah, in addition to using split planes for breaking up a level for chunking in speed, we can also do it for affecting reflection probes. Good lesson to know. All right, this light's there too. Ooh, that looks nice. See how that lights up that side and that part nicely. That's why spotlights are nice. Okay, so I think this level is done with lighting. That nice little specularity there. So like, where's that light coming from? But it also looks really cool. Thing with there, really nice and subtle. Maybe use a little bit more of a light somewhere, light source somewhere in here. But we're not going to worry about that. You guys can figure that part out. Just wanted to show you sort of uh, how to make a level look more polished using just uh, the light entities. Pretty cool. And even the level geometry isn't too rough, like in terms of uh, grid size being less and having less smoothing. And you can see a little bit right here. Not quite as smooth as you normally get. But it's definitely good enough for iterating on. You only really need to change those grid settings right before you're done, ready to distribute the level to everybody else. Yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, next time we're going to be looking more at that entity tab and uh, what all those different entities do and how to uh, edit them and link scripts together and all sorts of fun stuff like that. I'll catch you guys next time.